If you talk to most doctors about their medical school training, many will tell you that one of the most impactful experiences was participating in the human anatomy lab. Beyond the humbling nature of learning from a human cadaver, the physical nature of the experience, the sights, the sounds, and especially the smell, stay with you forever. The smell which permeated your lab clothes was the result of a preservant called formaldehyde. As it turns out, medical students aren't the only ones exposed to formaldehyde. If you open kitchen cabinets or rest your weary head at the end of a long day, you too are most likely experiencing some level of formaldehyde exposure. Formaldehyde is a volatile organic compound which turns into gas at room temperature. The World Health Organization labels it a carcinogen, and it is an integral component of manufactured pressed wood products, including particle board, plywood, and fiberboard. Last year, formaldehyde came under the spotlight when the CDC recommended that Katrina victims evacuate emergency trailers because of high formaldehyde levels, which place them at risk for respiratory problems, including asthma, and a variety of other ailments, including burning eyes, headaches, and bloody noses. Plywood and particle board are extensively used in the construction of prefabricated and mobile homes, and the Department of Housing and Urban Development set limits on formaldehyde and materials for these kinds of dwellings. But for most homes in America, and for their cabinets, furniture, cradles, and even some cosmetics, there are no limits. A bill introduced to Congress in September 2009 would change all that and require that formaldehyde emissions reach tight maximum limits by 2012. That action is long overdue. These emissions have been on the radar screen for some time. The move toward tighter homes with energy conservation has only served to accentuate the problem in the past decade. Some manufacturers are looking toward soy-based alternatives and other options. Those on the leading edge, however, are looking beyond lowering formaldehyde levels toward making their products formaldehyde-free. Why? Because with the power of the Internet, consumers can identify now with the click of a mouse how green and how safe their product choices may be. What should you do? Well. If you think you have a problem, test kits are now available to measure formaldehyde levels in the home. If levels exceed 0.1 parts per million, or if you have symptoms you feel are related to formaldehyde fumes, it's recommended that you remove the source if feasible or increase ventilation. For Health Commentary, I'm Mike McGee.